Alright. Here I am again after some very, very odd things happened last night. Many of which I don't want to explain, but the worst part is I just woke up from a nap. So let's see how good I can do at Tengu Man stage with Mega Man. Tengu Man is the second boss that carries over from Mega Man 8. Another good choice because he is one of my favorites. And Tengu Man stage is one of the most mellow songs ever. It also takes place very high in the sky. Careful of the cold mists here, or as I like to call them, the cotton candy mists in this level. But what they do is impede your movement severely. And that is no good in this level, considering you have to make some pretty quick jumps up these ever so quickly popping balloons. Careful of the green balloons here. They don't actually pop if you stand on them for too long, but they do still pop if you shoot them. And there we have ten crows, um, Tengu Man's birds that shoot weapons that look just like his blade. And here we have, I think these are, uh, I don't actually know what to call these guys, but they're sort of mini-bosses of sorts. They summon cold mists and start wind, so they're pretty irritating nonetheless. Oh goodness. And here we have two Hanya attackers, the shield attackers of this game. Which are essentially just shield attackers with funnier faces. And Tellies make a reappearance. Oh boy. Everybody's favorite. More of these uh, wind Goros, as I'm going to call them, because I think Goro sounds like a pretty good name for these uh, angry looking people that look like they should have been in Grenade Man stage. I, I don't exactly know what they're throwing at me, but um, it doesn't look very good. More tellies. Pretty hard to make jump there with Mega Man, of course. With base, it's, uh, well, yeah. And the Don Cannons and tellies are not a very healthy mix, as you can see. So yes, this stage can be a bit grating. However... We fight on, or I fight on more, more specifically. And yes, that's what happens if a cold mist hits you. You have to shake it off and it's very irritating. And what the hell was I getting stuck on there? Oh, so yes, you have to kill all the wind goros to open the door in the room they're in. Back to the evil Telly room, where Tellys are mixed with the Dawn Cannons and things get pretty bad. And there's a pretty easy database CD for that matter. If you have Sniper Joe. Now I'll demonstrate what I meant by if you get close enough you can shoot through the shield. 
it just takes very, very inching precision, so I don't always recommend it. And now to fight Tango Man himself. Despite not having his weakness, I think I can do this. However, Tango Man is not easy in this game. He's very quick, difficult to hit with Mega Man, and his tornado hold does that. Which is why jumping into it is not always the most safe option. Which is not really shocking, is it? Anyways, Tango Man has a few attacks. The Tornado Hold, which you saw there. And here's the Tango Blade, where you have to make a very precise jump or get far enough away. I prefer making the jump as it's more reliable once you get the timing down. And now he has his dash diving attack. Or his dashing dive attack, yeah. Watch where he's going. Yeah, see, watch where he's going because sometimes he'll try and fake you out and you'll jump and get hit. He also quite frequently flies out of shot radius, so you can't really hit him with Mega Man too reliably. If you can get behind him for the Tengu Blade, he won't actually move anywhere. Which is an interesting way to... Interesting way to sort of foil his plans, but that is Tengu Man. And after defeating Tengu Man, we get one of my favorite weapons in this game. Got the Tengu Blade! It's a melee attack that also fires a projectile. However, it has another property that this video didn't, or that, that uh, demonstration did not show. And I will show it off in the next level we do in this video, which would be... Pirate Man! Pirate Man's level reuses graphics from Aquaman stage and has a really nice soothing sound to it. I love the music in this level. Anyways, the Tengu Blade, as you saw in the weapon demonstration clip, does fire a projectile and can be used as a melee weapon, or melee weapon, sorry. However, it also has an added property. If you slide with it, you get a Tengu Blade attack that actually dashes, much like the boss himself. It also makes you invincible, so it's pretty much an upgraded charge kick, if you want to think of it like that. Oh, oh, he snuck up on me there. Only Mega Man can reach this part, since the sliding area. Because I guess Base is too stupid to get on his butt and scoot it, so... Whatever. Anyways, yeah, as you can see, this takes place in a pretty aquatic, nice, nice little aquatic base. Pirate Man's got a pretty good setup. And let's get another database disc, shall we? Oh. Guess another one over there. Look at that. All the opportunities are just piling up for these database CDs. Let's we'll skim over them, maybe. Maybe earlier than when I collect all of them, but whatever. Oh, these whales are pretty annoying. Um. Copy Vision will help take them out, though. Also, fun note about the copy vision, if you press the L button, you can uh, omit the clone completely whenever you want. So if you want to quickly change weapons, you can do that. If you miss with it, for example. 
And this is an example of another interesting enemy, the Mimic enemy. You might be seeing more of them later. You can shoot those bubbles and actually break them. So you can actually escape from your bubble prison if you really don't want to go in one. And that's what happens when you jump into a mine. Oh. You know what? Whatever. Let's try that again. I'm not scrapping a recording because I made a mistake. Because I, don't, I really don't want to do Tengu Man stage again. So anyways, back here. Oh, fun note, you can stop these spinning gabule enemies by shooting them. They'll actually momentarily freeze. Despite it making a twinging noise, not like in the old Mega Man games where you would actually hear a shot confirmation and they'd just stop. No, you actually have to pay attention to them here. Oh man, those spike mines seem to do a lot of damage. Whatever though, we got two good database CDs. Can something bust that green wall? Hmm, guess not. You know, it's time to be extraordinarily careful here. We already know that's a mimic, so let's not go for that. Ooh, that seems pretty risky. So let's use one of the bubbles in this level to help us out. There we are. Now, we, we, I don't know if we actually have Pirate Man's weakness or not. We could. But I don't think he's weak to either of these weapons. So, with that in mind, let's take on Pirate Man. Who, despite being a pirate, is not very difficult. All you have to really do is lure out those mines so that they uh, stop moving near a location where they're easier to dodge for you. He bounces off this wall approximately eight times. When he does that move. After a minor, techni minor, minor technical issue, we're back. That, uh, something quite literally happened. I might include that in a bit of a blooper, because I really don't want to show it in the full video. Ugh, how embarrassing. Technical issues as usual, I suppose. Anyways, you can lure out the pirate mines by, uh... Standing close enough to them so that they'll stop and explode. Oh my! Oh god damn it, pirate man! Alright, alright. So now, yeah, well, let's try this for real now and not drop my stuff. Oh, Jesus, I hate this guy. I don't know why, but I just have much more problems with him than I should.
Especially when he fucking does that over and over again and makes it undodgeable. Okay, no, we have to beat this boss. Except for this time, because I've got another live. We're fine. We'll be alright. We'll be perfectly... Perfectly fine. Four, five, six, seven, eight. Always eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'm gonna fill up the water now. Uh oh. Two, three, four, five. And then he decided to go down because of the water level. Great. Okay, that, that becomes literally undodgeable. Why would you design an attack like that? That's seriously the stupidest thing you could ever do with the game, is make an attack undodgeable. Especially one that he's going to do repeatedly. Ugh. And then he goes slightly downwards for that one. Because the water level is very sinking. Very sinking. Oh, Jesus Christ. Thank you. Please die. Never show your face here again, Pirate Man. I don't want to see you ever. No more. No more. From Pirate Man, you get a pretty useful weapon, though. So there's that much. You got Remote Mine. And it's basically the flash bomb that detonates on button press instead. And it has a smaller explosion radius, but not that much. So after that friggin' big scuffle, I think it would be a good time to say no more for now. Who knows where we're gonna take on with base, but it's probably gonna be the weakness chain as opposed to that, because I don't want to imagine how long that fight would take with him. Anyways, sayonara! Alright, so let's welcome back the base part of the playthrough, and let's go somewhere a bit different with base. We are gonna go to Cold Man now. Speaking of which, I might be contracting one. <laughs> Ugh. Anyways, his stage reuses, of course, Frostman's graphics. Like you wouldn't have expected that. Well, maybe you wouldn't have, but I don't know. And here we have skating bunnies! I honestly forget what they're actually called, but... They're skating bunnies. Put something together. Ugh. 
Oh my god, whoa, okay. Flicker screwed me over there. Robotic Bunny Brigade, br Brigade, Brigade, let's go! Database CD, woohoo! And there's a Mega Man one. <laughs> This boss is, uh... This mini boss is actually quite durable. Thankfully he's no match for the copy vision. And again, not much is. It's actually a pretty good weapon! <laughs> Spinning Gabule, stop moving! Double jumping is gonna make this section's uh, ice platforming with Mega Man a lot easier, since Mega Man would have to ride those ice blocks at some point. Face can just double jump over every single gap. How lucky for him. And now we fight Cold Man himself, who is actually, I think, a form of a fridge. The, the resemblance is not extraordinarily uncanny, but it's there. The ice wall simply protects him from shots. Even then you can just jump up and fire downwards and it'll probably just end up working. And with base you can easily clear him, as opposed to Mega Man who would have to stay in that corner there because he can't jump him, to my knowledge. Oh no, it's Revenge of the Cold Mists! Indeed it is. There we go. Goodbye, cold man. I can't believe I had got hit that much, but you know what? It'll work. <laughs> and then base decides to take power in a more extraordinarily extravagant way. AKA, I'll put it in English, he decides to explode into flames and erupt with power. And the heat zooms out. The ice wall is basically a pushable wall of ice that you can actually ride on top of. Interesting idea, you're gonna have to utilize it later on with Mega Man, but with base it's pretty obsolete considering he has a double jump. So that opens up a few more, well one more boss actually, and that's the one we're going to do next, Burner Man. This guy... This guy is very difficult without his weakness. No matter who you pick, this guy will be a universal problem. Thankfully, his stage has unbelievably joyful music.
Yes, um... So we're pretty much in Search Man's jungle. I guess Burner Man decided, I want to burn this thing down now. Maybe he got irritated with having to use the Thunderclaw so much in the stage. Anyways, there's just some bats and robots here. And you can actually omit that Sniper Joe with base. And this guy can be killed in an interesting way. Inch ever so slowly. And you can shoot him in the foot. Death by being shot in the foot. Now that's something. Mega Man has it easy here. He can shoot through the wall there. Base, just shoot him in the foot again. Don't worry, this stage will get a lot more difficult as we get further. Like there, for instance. For Mega Man, that's probably a trouble room. In fact, that is a trouble room. Down here is a secret wall. And just get the disc in here and move it. Yes, these floors do uh, overlook hidden pits, so be careful. It also allows base to sort of omit whatever platforming there could have been here. Did I actually get that disc? I did. Interesting. Also, that falling screw actually helped. There is a data disk CD that I don't want to try and get. So we're not going to. Moving on even further, these guys now throw bouncing balls. How cute. They're still placed in mostly useless positions if you think about it. However, in this next room, I think we'll have to take advantage of one thing the copy vision gives us. The ability to shoot through walls. So that weapon is definitely advantageous for base. In a lot of aspects. Oh, damn it. Oh, this room sucks, by the way. Um, the spear room is a lot easier to done with Mega Man than base because we have a slide that makes us a bit shorter. Base does not have that luxury. And then we're stuck with things like this. Ow. Well, I got it with minimal damage. Oh, I missed that database disk. Now here's a fun little room. Man, that copy vision is really good. I will jump in there and get that database CD at least. Want to redeem ourselves a bit. There's a giant telly, and he drops a huge bomb, which makes large flames. You can kill him to avoid that, but... Also, yes, the large flames are an instant kill. If you're curious. So don't bother killing the telly, just try and run and find high ground. Good to know the power-ups respawn, though. Ice blocks in a Burner Man stage? What the hell? What? Wow. That was the ultimate buzzkill, Telly, right there. How humiliating. I think it's safe to say, yeah, he wasn't too far from death. Oh, oh, come on. Come on. 
is the Dompa cannons are giving me problems, so I'll just do that. Oh, cutting it close. God damn it, he did it again! Okay, this telly is, um... Uh, prolonging the stage's defeat, and I don't like that. But I don't know how to handle it now. Beautiful. Gotta go fast. Alright, there we go. How much lives do I got? Probably like one. Yeah, I don't have any extra lives. This is gonna be bad. I don't wanna have to continue. So we're not going to. We're gonna beat Burner Man. Defeating Burner Man with his weakness is even a bit of a pain, however, it is doable. Doing so, however... Involves waiting for him to do a specific attack. None of which he has done right now. In fact, he seems content to just sit up there and dive at me. This attack works. Push it to the right. Now, if you can follow him while that's going on... Oh, no, not the bear traps. And then instant flamethrower. I will see you back at Burner Man. Give me a moment. Alright, we're back at Burner Man. <laughs> Let's hope this one goes a bit better. If you're on the screen when he's pushed onto the spikes, he takes extra damage, so try to stay with him. And not push the ice wall into, like, the pit of the spikes in the opposite direction he's at. Because then you look like an idiot. Oh, bear traps, really, Burner Man, really? Yes, keep doing that. One more time, come on. Yes, thank you! No! Oh, that could not have worked out. Ooh. Such humiliating defeat. Oh. Pfft. Keep forgetting you have to use his weakness untraditionally. There we go. That should do it. I turned green for some reason. <laughs> Interesting color palette for that. Wave burner. Look at how beautiful that is. I love it. I love it. Great power. Great power. It actually really is a good, useful power, but... 
The good news is, Burner Man is felled, and now we can finally move on from him, because he was a nightmare. And you know what? Since we're using base, let's go check the shop. Got anything new? Oh my god, he does! Treble boost. Sure! Weak points to my enemies. A turbo dash, if you will. And we'll get the energy balancer. Did I already get that? I don't know. <laughs> Anyways, that's the end of this. Lord knows what we're doing next time, but I am certainly happy it is not Burner Man.